have read the revelations of John the Divine. But it is with great pleasure that this morning I call upon Reverend John the Beloved to bring his own revelations of love and joy. Reverend John. Good morning, friends. Good morning, Good morning family. Joy to add my own words of welcome to you all. Ours is truly a mighty nation, and we're just sending blessings to all our people everywhere and all those people who listen to us on the World Wide Web. There's an excellent practice that everyone would do well to follow, and yet very few of us in this day of spiritual unfoldment are getting the fullest fruits of this easy but powerful ancient practice. I refer to the power of blessing. The power of blessing. And that is the subject of my talk this morning. In the Bible, there are many stories of the Hebrew patriarchs voicing blessings and predicting the good to come to those who they bless. The Hebrews believed in these blessings, and knew that they carried great power to accomplish great good. If any Hebrew was to receive a spoken blessing, he did not want anyone or anything to stand in his way of accepting it, for he knew that it was a Christless gift. We are told in Genesis 32, verse 36, that Jacob wrestled with an angel and said, quote, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Unquote. The power of spoken or silent blessing did not pass, however, with Jacob or the patriarchs of that days. Each of us now has the same ability to speak blessings to our world and to people around us. And although this ability may be in a dormant state for many of us before we spend so much time complaining and criticizing, let us remember that that which slumbers may be aroused and awakened by blessing. Ernest Holmes, who gave the world this great teaching known as Science of Mind, tells us in his textbook of the same name that when we constructively praise and creatively bless, life abounds with peace and joy. Well then, what is blessing? Blessing is the act of beholding the good in all creation. Blessing is the act of beholding the good in everything we see and everything we encounter. Blessing helps us to keep firmly in mind the truth that there really is a spiritual relationship between all parts of, of creation. And once we start to follow the practice of blessing, of beholding the good that is in all, we find that it grows into a habit and becomes almost automatic with us. We can develop this habit by being mindful of using constructive words, thoughts, and feelings all the time. For example, you know, every time you handle money, you should bless it. Develop this habit, and I guarantee you that you will significantly improve your cash flow. The Babemba tribe of South Africa have made a fine art of using blessing as a powerful transformational tool. You know, in many cultures, including our own, when someone strays beyond the bounds of civil, decent, or lawful behavior, the community's approach is to bombard the offender time and time again with retelling of every wrong committed and every negative consequence rendered. Parents do to their children, they don't want to correct today's mistake. They say, everything that happened from the beginning of the summer. You know, I've been telling you since last year, the time you wrote, you know. <laughs> Am I right or not right? <laughs> not so in the case of the Babemba tribe, in which the treatment given the delinquent is the polar opposite. In the Babemba, when a person acts irresponsibly or unjustly, he or she is placed in the center of the village, alone and unfettered. All work ceases, 
and every man, woman, and child in the village gathers in a large circle around the accused individual. Then each person in the tribe speaks to the accused one at a time about all the good things the person in the center of the circle has done in, in his or her lifetime. Every incident, every experience that can be recalled with any detail and accuracy is recounted. All the person's positive attributes, good deeds, strengths, and kindnesses are recited carefully and at length. The tribal ceremony often lasts several days, but then, of course, the member doesn't, don't have anybody running in Russia this morning. <laughs> at the end, the tribal circle is broken, a joyous celebration takes place, and the person is symbolically and literally welcomed back into the tribe. How can we apply this principle of blessing then in a practical way in our life today? I just can imagine around the dinner table on a Sunday or if one of the kids has misbehaved, if the mother and father and the other siblings just sat with that youngster and told him all the wonderful things or told her all the wonderful things about his or her life and what they admire so much about them. What a difference that would make, I think. So knowing how important order and system are in your lives and in the accomplishment of anything, I want us to then set up a practice of blessing on a scheduled basis. We have schedules, don't we? To-do lists. So let us add blessing to our to-do list. In other words, we can put ourselves on a blessing program to get that schedule started. Most of our daily routines begin in the morning, so that is an excellent time to practice blessing. We can take a few minutes by ourselves and use a short prayer such as, and I quote, Today, God is blessing everything and everyone by means of me. Let us say that. Today, God is blessing everything and everyone by means of me. Together. Today, God is blessing everything and everyone by means of me. What a powerful prayer that is. You see, friends, we are related spiritually to every person, place, and experience. And when we bless everyone and everything, everyone and everything benefits from our association. This kind of morning blessing sets the standard for your day. It's like a kind of motto in that it guides and influences your approach to the entire day and its events. It really colors your day. Of course, we can expand the morning blessing period if we choose to do so. We may pray a special prayer for each member of our family. We may remember friends and neighbors. We may even remember our political leaders, world leaders, and the nations of the earth. So I've been blessing Egypt and what's happening there as I bless all of creation in the morning. But when I first started teaching science of mind classes in preparation to become a practitioner, under the watchful eye of my mentor, Dr. Elmer Lobson, several of the class participants would come to me after class and ask me to do a treatment for them. So I began the practice of praying daily for those people registered in my classes. And you know, it's amazing how many class members have shared that just knowing that someone is praying with them and blessing them first thing in the morning makes such a big difference in their lives. But even more important, it makes a huge difference in my life. But when we bless others, we really are blessing ourselves. But as you know, we're all connected in this web of life. So this brings me to your assignment. You couldn't get... No fear, you have to have an assignment. You haven't been for so long. But I'm so glad to see you. You have to get an assignment special. Your assignment is to invoke the power of blessing this week. So what assignment? Here's how I want you to do it. Make a list of the persons places, things, and conditions that you want to bless. Don't make it too long on this because you're going to have to do it every day during your morning prayer time. And I'm doing that everyone within the sound of my voice does have a morning prayer time. <laughs> so I want you to make this list and to bless those people, those conditions, and those places every day this week. And if you have a business place or you go to work, I want you to also bless your place of business before beginning work. This week. Easy assignment? 
I'm not from there. Yes. 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 Easy for two people, God bless you. <laughs> a real blessing program should not, however, stop with morning prayer periods. To make such a program effective, we can also set aside brief times throughout the day when we stop and do our special work of blessing. Then after a while, we will discover that the practice of blessing actually becomes automatic. We find that before we do anything, we begin with a prayer of blessing. And yes, we can bless even those things which might seem very ordinary experiences and associations. You know, when I first learned this power of blessing from, from Dr. Elmer many years ago, I transformed how I experienced having to go to the supermarket, which I used, like so many people, to dislike intensely. I did it by the power of blessing. As I pull up outside the supermarket, I speak a word of blessing saying, thank you God that I am able to go shopping. Then as I go up and down the aisles, I say, I bless every item on these shelves as material proof of God's infinite bounty. And I want you to know that this whole experience of shopping and blessing has made a world of difference in how I think about going to the supermarket. That simple act of blessing time in the supermarket has changed me from being disgruntled and discontent, this feeling discontent, to being joyful. I feel so joyful as I shop that I often sing softly to myself, which I didn't realize until one day an old lady said to me, you're not singing today. <laughs> I always look forward to hearing you. I said, but now I'm going to sing in the bathroom, I'm a bathroom baritone. She said, no, you sing every week in the supermarket, and you know what is funny? I always book you up in the liquor aisle. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, Every time I feel this spirit moving in my soul, I will pray. And she joined me and we finished the musical praise and laughed. And she hugged me and we went our way. She with her butler rum and man with my butler. Ah, uh, we wrote a piece of I'll tell you something else. In addition to feeling good about shopping, it seems as if my money always goes forever when I have praise and bless the business of shopping. So friends, the power of blessing has no limits. It can and must be applied to every phase of your life. You know, we often say, God bless you. And we don't think what it really means. We think it's something nice to say, but we really don't think about the power of those words. Yet it is found all through scripture. In fact, it is found 467 times in the Bible, with a hundred of, of, and eight of these being in the New Testament, Acts of Blessings. What does the Bible mean when it says something is blessed? Two of the Greek words that we translate as blessed are eulogeo, which means to speak well of, where, where we get the word eulogy from, and makarios, which means having the favor of. I believe if we all use the same amount of energy for speaking well of and bestowing the favor of God on others as we use for criticizing and condemning, we could get much better results in our lives. Everyone wants and needs a blessing. An Old Testament story illustrates this quite well. Remember the story of Isaac? Isaac had two sons, Esau and Jacob. Thank you. Now, in the end of his life, Isaac wanted to give his blessing to his eldest son, Esau. But Jacob, through the conniving of his mother, tricked Isaac into giving him the blessing that was intended for Esau. When Esau heard that his father had blessed Jacob, he cried out with a loud and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me too, father! Isn't he rightly named Jacob, for he has cheated me twice now? He took my birthright, and look, now he has taken my blessing. Then he asked, haven't you saved a blessing for me? Do you only have one blessing, my father? Bless me, me too, father. And Esau wept nobly. That story is from in Genesis 27, verses 34, 36, and 38. When I read this moving story, I can hear the anguish that was in Esau's voice when he said, Bless me too, my father. Haven't you a blessing for me too? This is the cry of every child to, to his or her parents. That has been the cry of so many people who come to me for counseling that they never felt worthy 
or good enough for their parents' love. This is a cry of every spouse to his or her mate. This is the cry of people you rub shoulders with every day. This is the cry of young men at the traffic lights offering to wipe your windshield. He doesn't need wiping. This is the cry of so many people that we meet along life's path. And this may be your own cry. Paul Tournier, the late Swiss psychiatrist and theologian, discovered a recurring psychological problem in his therapy in Switzerland. He called it the unblessed child. It had nothing to do with the socioeconomic status or the talents and abilities of the child. It had to do with children not feeling blessed, not feeling approved by their parents, feeling that somehow they did not measure up, that somehow they never really pleased their parents. So genuine acceptance is an unmet need in so many people today, but it does not have to be that way. Reverend Rick Ezel, a Baptist pastor and life coach, suggests three important methods of blessing based on the biblical practice, and I'd like to share them with you. First, a blessing needs to be felt. Dr. Ezra writes, and I quote, in the scriptures, touch played an important part in the bestowal of the family blessing. When Isaac blessed Jacob, an embrace and a kiss were involved. The same is true today. We want and often need to feel the embrace of those we love. Never stop giving meaningful touches and remember that hugs, holding hands, the stroke of a head and the arm around the shoulder all communicate acceptance, approval, importance, and value. To neglect meaningful touch is to fail to transmit the blessing to others. And fathers, this is a special heads up to you. Hug your children, and particularly your sons, and voice your love and approval. It's important to voice it, dads, because the second criterion for blessing is that a blessing needs to be spoken. Abraham spoke a blessing to Isaac. Isaac spoke it to his own son Jacob, and Jacob spoke it to each of his 12 sons and to two of his grandchildren. So you see, a blessing becomes more powerful when it is spoken. I always treasure the spoken blessings I received from my own parents, and one of the most treasured was when I telephoned my mom to tell her I had been called to ministry, expecting her to do what now for herself silly. And instead she said, God bless you, son, you're going to be a wonderful minister. Red Power Bank is in, and she was right. Ah, <laughs> oh, bless your heart. <laughs> Red Power is, is incarnated then in words. We're told in Proverbs 18.21, and I quote, Life and death are in the power of the tongue. End of that scripture. Words have the incredible power to build up or tear down, don't they? They can destroy a friendship, rip apart a home, and cause harm in a relationship. On the other hand, your words can be a source of healing, forgiveness, love, laughter, and life. Our children, our partners, everyone we meet on life's path longs to hear words of approval and blessing. So let's not wait until Thanksgiving services to speak the words of approval and blessing that we hold in our hearts. Bestow a blessing on others as often as you can. Thirdly, a blessing attaches special value to the person being blessed. In some people, we don't have to look very far to see their value, do we? They seem to sparkle in everything they do. But in others, we must dig deep to find the diamond hidden beneath what may seem a rough exterior. The biggest blessing we can give such people is to point out their worth and value. In so doing, we set them free in much the same way that Michelangelo said he set free the beautiful forms he saw in the marble he sculpted. So you can turn someone's life around, my friends, by giving them a blessing. Through meaningful touch, a spoken word, and pointing out their value, 
you have the power to change the direction of someone's life. Tomorrow, touch a co-worker. Look them in the eye and say something like, this office wouldn't be the same without you. I'm so glad we work together. And just watch the effect of your blessing on them. And in your own life, whenever a condition appears, remember that it comes to you to be met, blessed, and handled. Nothing is too unimportant for us to bless. The spiritual attention that we give to that which may appear unimportant is like water to the desert. It causes growth, unfoldment, and fruition. Author Tom Johnson, in his book Lessons from the Source, puts it this way, and I quote, what you praise comes into your life for your good. What you criticize stays in your life at the level of your criticism. When we complain about anything, we are saying to the law of mind that this is the way we want things to be. Blessing, on the other hand, stimulates the law at the level of prosperity, love, health, success, and well-being, and we experience it all richly and greatly, unquote. I'm reminded of a story I once heard of a man who was bemoaning the fact that he was so very poor in worldly goods. Then he passed a blind person with his white cane, and suddenly he began to take stock. He asked himself what price he would accept for his eyes, and decided that he wouldn't accept a million US dollars. Silently he prayed, I bless my eyes and rededicate them to the service of God. What would he sell his heirs for? Why, not a million dollars. His ability to think, to converse, to share ideas, to feel, to be conscious of living. What would he take for these? There was absolutely no, no, not wealth enough in all the world to buy these precious God-given assets. And so he embarked on a blessing program and soon his fortunes took a turn for the better. Let us say together, I bless all my faculties, talents, and abilities, and I rededicate them to the service of God. Together, I bless all of my faculties, talents, and abilities, and I rededicate them to the service of God. Of course, some people may argue that you, you just cannot bless everything and everyone. A client told me recently, because I was thinking about this blessing talk, um, that they simply can't bless their tax returns. And I said, you need to bless. Uh, everything. And they said, what? Bless the taxes? And I said, absolutely. But when you bless your tax returns and payments, uh, it has a very powerful effect on the work that that money goes to do. We learn to dedicate our taxes to good government. We're actually having a direct spiritual voice that will positively influence the trends of government. Because remember, all life is connected and therefore Think about it as being your contribution to the well-being of the government, of your country and in fact the governments of the world. In fact, friends, whenever you are paying bills, bless each one. See every bill as a vote of confidence in your confidence in your ability to pay for services rendered. See every check you draw as contributing to the endless circulation of God's abundance and know that all the good that you send out in the form of money substance returns to you pressed down, shaken together, and running over in your life, in your finances, and in your affairs. This week, let us utilize the power of blessing. Make a conscious effort to look beyond appearances to the spiritual truth that relates all creation harmoniously. In such a state of consciousness, we realize that God's presence and power are completely and perfectly in charge of every person, place, thing, and condition. When we enter into a blessing program with all of our heart, we are cooperating with God's laws, which in turn must open up new and expansive ways of living for us. Let us begin right now. Please affirm with me, I bless myself and honor the presence of God in me. Together, I bless, I bless myself, myself and, and honor, honor the presence of God, of God in me. I am of inestimable value to life. I, I am of inestimable value tonight. Now hold your neighbor's hand, remember the value of touch. Look them in the eye and say, I bless and honor the presence of God in you. You are of inestimable value tonight. 
Friends, this center, this country, this world is blessed by your presence here this morning. You are of inestimable value tonight. Namaste. <laughs>